Hello, welcome to the first in a series of tutorials for Prisms BF, an open source phase field modeling framework developed at the Prism Center of the University of Michigan. In this video, I will show you how to install Prisms BF, run a sample application, and visualize the results. All this information is contained in the Prisms BF manual. You can see the link at the bottom of the screen, but you can also find this link and other helpful resources in the description of the video. Before we begin with the installation steps, I should mention that today we are going to cover the direct installation of Prisms BF, which can be done on the Mac OS or Linux platforms. We also have a Docker-based installation that works on Windows, but we will cover that on a separate video. So I will be using a Mac for this tutorial, but since everything is done on the terminal, it will be pretty much the same as on Linux. Also, I should mention that in order to install Prisms PF, we need some prerequisites. Specifically, we'll need to have the CMake tool for managing the building process and the DL2 finite element library with the MPI and PForest libraries as dependencies. The installation of these prerequisites will be covered on a separate video, but you can also look this up on the installation part of the manual. And finally, we will also need a visualization application such as Visit or Paraview to visualize the results. All right, let's get to it. First, let's open a terminal. Now go to the directory where you want to install Prisms BF. In my case, I decided to create a directory called Prisms BF, and this is the path. But you can choose whatever directory you want. Next, we're going to download Prisons BF from the GitHub repository by typing git clone and then the URL of the Git repository. So we're going to get the URL from the GitHub page, which is this one. Let's just copy it, paste it, and it's cloning the repository. This should take a few seconds. Okay, now that we have this, let's type ls, and we see that there is a new folder called phase field. We're gonna go to this folder, type ls again, and before we compile the core library, we're gonna make sure that the compiler knows where to find the directory where DL2 is installed. So we're gonna type echo, And in my case, I installed a prepackaged image file of DL2 for Mac OS, so it's showing the path. But if you do not see anything, you need to set that environment variable. So I have it set it up on my .profile file in my home directory, so I don't have to worry about it, and uh, it's set every time I open a terminal. Okay, we are now ready to move forward with compiling the Prisons PF core library. First, we type CMake. Uh, this will manage the build process and create a make file. And we'll do make to compile. And just to speed up the process a little, we're going to use four cores by setting the dash J flag. And we are compiling now. Uh, this still may take a few minutes, depending on the speed of your processors. Also, you may see some warnings that include the use of functions that DL2 has marked as deprecated and unused type definitions but it should still work as long as there's no errors. And we are also working on updating the functions that we use to the latest DL2 version. Okay, I'm going to skip to the end of the compilation and we can see that it's showing no errors. So the core library has been compiled. I should mention that this is the only time you need to compile the core library unless you need to change something within it, which you really shouldn't unless you are an expert level user. So now that we've compiled the core library, let's go to the application folder, which contains all the pre-built example application. We do ls-l. And here are all the applications in the application folder. As an example, we're going to run the can Hilliard application, this one here. 
which simulates a small 2D system undergoing phase separation with cantilever dynamics. But first I'd like to show you a very brief description of this model. A typical free energy for the system is made up of two parts, a bulk energy contribution, here denoted as F of C, and a grading contribution, uh, which includes this grading of C term. Here the order parameter C typically represents our scale concentration. So the bulk free energy is usually described by this function called double well, which has two minima at the phase coexistence values for C. And the dynamics is described by this equation below, which drives the free energy of the system into a minimum with a constraint that the order parameter is conserved. What this means is that the average concentration in the system is a constant in time. Okay, let's go back to terminal. Remember, we are in the Applications folder, and we are going to go to the Canhelier Application folder. We type ls, and these are the files inside the Application folder. Let's do a quick overview of the files in this application. Parameters.in, this one here, is a parsed text file where the user sets up the parameters of the simulation, such as mesh size, time step, boundary conditions, and many others. Uh, in this case, parameters adaptive.in is another parameters file which is very similar, except it has the settings for an adaptive mesh. Equations.cc is where we set the governing equations of the problem. Then in ICs and BCs, we set the initial conditions and the boundary conditions if they are time-dependent or non-uniform. Postprocess.cc is a file where we write additional expressions to calculate quantities that may not be necessary for the simulation, but that we may want to output, such as the local and global free energy. And finally, custom PDE contains the declarations for all the functions and variables specific to the application. Okay, I mentioned before that we only need to compile the core library once, but we do need to compile each application the first time we want to run it, or every time we change a .cc or .h file. So let's compile this application. Again, we do cmake. This will create a make file. That's done, and then we are going to do make. Now we could compile to create a debug version, which is recommended if you are debugging your application. But in this case, let's do the release version because we already know it works and it'll run faster. So we type make release, and this will create the executable file to run the code. Fortunately, this step takes a lot less than compiling the core library. Now it's done. And if we list the files so that the most recent ones appear at the bottom, we can see the executable, which is called main, this one here. Now there are a couple ways to run the code. We could just execute it using dot slash main, but we can also run in parallel using MPI run. So let's do that and run in four processors. And now the code is running and outputting the results both on the screen, where it's set to output every 1,000 time steps, and into files. I believe this simulation is set for 100,000 time steps, so it shouldn't take too long. OK, so just to save some time, I'm going to skip to the end. And as you can see, the last output to screen shows a summary of the simulation, which is this. Here's the total simulation time, 
80 seconds. And each of these rows that I'm selecting shows the fraction of the total time taken by each of the different tasks in the code. Now, if we do ls again, we can see the output files that the code generated. Let's do that. Now, the VTU files contain the values of all the field variables at each point of the mesh, these files. You can see that each of these files has a number, and this number corresponds to a time step. For this simulation, we set the number of time steps to 100,000 and the number of outputs to 10. So the simulation generates one output every 10,000 time steps. Now, in addition to these VTU files, we also see the restart files, which are these four, which are checkpoint files that allow us to restart the simulation from the last time step, rather than the initial conditions, if we want to. Finally, this text file, Integrated Fields, contains global values calculated at different time steps. For example, in this application, we've set it to output the global free energy, as you can see here. OK, now we're ready to visualize the results. You can use any visualization application that can read VTU files, like Visit or Paraview. I personally like Visit better, so I'm going to use that one. OK, let's open Visit. Let's click on Open, then copy the location of the files, and then select the VTU files, which are already grouped. We click on OK, and now the database is already loaded. Now let's add a plot. A good one for 2D visualization is a pseudocolor plot. So we're going to select it. And then we're going to select the order parameter, uh, which is C. We click on draw. And we see this plot now in the window on the right. Now we can use the time slider to look at different times. And we can do this either uh, frame by frame, like this or set it to a specific time directly, like this. So since we are looking at a simulation with cantilever dynamics, we should observe domain coarsening, but with a fixed ratio between the volume, or area in this case, uh, of each face. Now let's add a mesh by going to Add, Mesh, and Draw. This is useful to see if the mesh is fine enough to resolve all the structures in the system, in particular interfaces, and it looks like it is in this case. And it will also be very helpful for simulations that use adaptive mesh. This software is also very powerful to do post-processing analysis, such as computing the integral of fields, plotting along a specific line, look at contour lines, and many other features. And we will look into some of these features in upcoming videos. So we'll conclude this video here, and just to recap, Today we've covered how to install Prisms PF, run a simulation, and visualize the results. I hope that this has been useful, but don't forget that in the description of the video we posted a link to the user's manual, the GitHub repository, and also a link to register for the user's forum, where you can submit your questions about the use of Prisms PF. Thank you for watching.